Hello everyone and welcome to Go For Launch Mercury. This is a game recently released to early access on Steam and it seeks to replicate the Mercury space flights on the Redstone rocket and the Atlas rocket, so the early manned space flights in the American space program. This is the first screen you will see when starting up the game at this point. It is a Unity game and that means fortunately that you can use um, launch options in Steam and command prompt options in order to set the screen resolution, which is good because as soon as I press enter you will see that there are no setting options. So since I need to use a custom resolution in order to record properly, um, it's good that it's at least a Unity game and we can use those the command prompt options. So enter. And I can't adjust the music volume yet, so that's something uh, later on. This is developed by a single person, so uh, obviously must be patient with the early access thing, the single developer as it says. And right now it just has Alan Shepard's flight and uh, John Glenn's flight. Now graphics quality will just set to ultra. I don't know what the details are on the difference yet. I will just go straight ultra and let's hope. I have uh, streamed this briefly to see what it's like. So I do have some brief experience. I have not watched a Scott Manley video on it. I know there is one. Um, in fact, Scott Manley uh, tweeting about was how I was made aware of this game's existence, but I didn't watch the video yet in order to form my own conclusions and such. Okay, so let's start. Again, Alpha 0.5.0, so you can think about where Kerbal Space Program was at at that point. So there's nothing much to click on in this room right now, and we're listening to JFK's address to Rice University, I believe. And it'll play the whole thing if we just wait around, but I don't really want to wait around. Let's uh, do mission selection, and you can see Friendship 7 is the John Glenn mission, and this is Alan Shepard's mission, and you can see the details there. Helper system, I think, is probably a good idea to start off. And we do not have Liberty Bell 7, and we don't have the later ones, and that's probably because of the mission audio. That has to be integrated and timed with everything. So, let's start with this. Since the title of the game is Go for Launch Mercury, I'm sort of hoping that later on there'll be a Go for Launch Gemini, Go for Launch Apollo kind of thing, but those might be tougher to make with the audio. And of course, EVAs and all. Okay, so here we are in Alan Shepard's Mercury spacecraft. And there's a checklist down there. And this is, I think, the helper system. And it's very helpful, because otherwise I'd spend forever looking for the switches. I actually wish that DCS World would have this sort of helper system. And also checklists. Um, Built-in checklists and helper systems would have been nice in that game too. But um, we can zoom in on here. This this uh, countdown procedure is very simple. Hi watt teleswitch cunt. So um, hi watt there there. Continue I suppose continuous and beacon continuous and there's this transmit switch transmit switch mm, there U U H F right. And squib switch, arm, auto retro jet switch, arm, and launch control switch ready. And presumably it'll start the countdown with that. Now, I've tried it, and if you, well, we, we can demonstrate this. It says ready, and then it'll start the audio for the countdown sequence. But even if you put these out of position now, it'll warn you, but it won't really do anything bad to you. So, there you go. We've got this little uh, image of the outside, so I think there's a periscope. And the altitude altimeter, surprisingly, I suppose this must be how it really was, only goes up to 100,000 feet. Uh, stirring music. If you want to see the external view, we press space. It's just sort of sitting there right now. Okay. 
Well, there is a stand for it, but it's setting aside from it. got a very cinematic feel as far as the music and all is concerned, which is good. It's sort of like being a part of, you know, a space movie. The right stuff, I was thinking of. So there we go. Now, interesting enough, as I showed in my own little video, the Redstone Rocket didn't pitch over like this. Because that's only that's what you do for orbit. It doesn't didn't really need to go at this angle. I mean, I guess it is okay as long as it doesn't flatten out. It's fine. It did go more downrange than up. Yeah, I guess it is all right. But we're only at like twenty thousand feet, so that was a pretty sharp turn it did. G-Force Indicator at 2 Gs. Remember, only one stage on this flight. Eighty seconds in. Now past sixty thousand feet. This is what Florida looks like in here. The coastline textures are pretty okay. Cloud textures, obviously. But then again, if you're going for space, you don't need high quality cloud textures. That's only for airplanes. Okay, uh, close to shutdown here. We're well over 100,000 feet. I wish this dial went a little bit higher, but okay. Again, it's the real audio in the background. And that shows shutdown. That's funny, the G, G meter went to zero before the official shutdown, but then... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Okay. Tower jettison, capsule separation. We've got my periscope here. Turn around. Oh, there's the booster. Booster does hang out here. It turned around like real fast. So yeah, now we can do manual controls. So push on manual control, ASCS flyby wire, and I use uh, Q, W, E, A, S, and D to control it, so um, let's see. That's what the attitude jets look like, and it is. Uh, it sort of does an SAS thing, in other words, it. It sort of stops my rotation because it's in fly by wire. Let's see, it's uh, like a SAS sort of thing. And it also shows you your fuel remaining to five decimal places there. Okay, we've tested roll, yaw, and pitch. Those are the little roll jets. Uh, it's a limited uh, camera control. It doesn't have the sort of panning on the m middle mouse button that I'm used to. Does have engine lighting. Well, I might as well start it off in sort of a retro position.
Oh, it's gonna take manual, uh, automatic control in a sec. There we go. So that's automatic control. And I didn't have to manually switch modes. I, I wish I did have to manually switch modes. I wish more could go wrong. Right now it's very... Uh, so I'm supposed to... Oh, locked autopilot, so I can't even touch that. Um, yeah, I wish I could do stuff wrong, basically. That I could mess up and it would not go right. So, retro, is how that's working. They fire in sequence and through the center of mass. Well, I want to see the retro pack separate here. We are still receiving excellent voice communication from the pilot. Switching fly by wire. I mean, you can see that uh, syncing up the audio to the events is important. And for the longer flights, like with the Atlas flights, that's going to be more complicated. Okay, off it goes. Not one of those explosive decouplings that we get in Kerbal, but okay. Roger, do not have a light. The retro rocket packet has jettisoned. I used a lot of fuel this time. I see the straps falling away. I heard a noise. Ox damp it was. Oh, okay, that's the middle override option. The light is green. Okay, jettisoned retro. The flame effects are sort of interesting at this point. I'm sure they'll improve. I think they're mainly meant to make it look good from the inside. Which they do. I mean, it, it looks decent uh, from the inside. On the way back down, we don't seem to be reading any G-forces here, which is interesting. Even though, of course, this is where the peak G-forces occurred. And we hear the rattling and also blackout. And unfortunately it doesn't have the splashdown yet, though I'm sure that will be added. So, that's basically where that mission is at. Now, let's uh, go with... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, there we go. Friendship 7, yeah. Okay. Yep, let's see how it works on an Atlas. Now, this is completely different, which is interesting. I didn't fully appreciate how different the two capsules were until this game. Go figure. I mean, they're both Mercury, but they're not exactly the same Mercury. Okay, so here we are in John Glenn's Mercury capsule, and right away you can see that the layout is rather different. We've got this timer here. We've got a nice little map, which is pretty darn fancy. Yeah, I, I wish I had that in more spacecraft, frankly. And otherwise, some of this is about the same. The altimeter is still the same. But uh, lots more switches to deal with, and you'll see that with the checklist. This checklist, uh, the previous checklist said simplified. This one says abbreviated, which is okay. Um, so let's go. At T minus 20, the Mercury astronaut is required to complete the following checklist to put the spacecraft in final launch configuration. Okay, well, I already did all left panel switch fuses to number one position. Squib switch arm. Squib arm. Auto retro jettison. Fortunately, they seem to be all in a row here. This one uh, is on. Okay, that's normal. And this auto, this normal. So if you want to do without the helper, that's marginally more impressive. But I like the little helper because otherwise I would spend forever trying to find these things. Actually, that alarm off. I don't think I need to do. Um, 
press reg handle in. Where was the reg handle? Uh, oh, uh, oh, there, there it is. Press reg. Okay. I oh, don't know what reg is. Retro attitude switch, auto, and retract sw scope switch, auto, landing bag switch, auto. Basically, everything is on auto, I guess, in case of an abort. I think that's the basic idea. That's why re retro attitude switch is auto and everything. It's mainly uh, for an abort sort of situation. And of course, you know, you would want it to automatically handle retro unless there was a specific reason why the pilot needed to take control. So next we just check the status of things. We checked that our fuel is 100%, which it is. So we tap that control after checking it. And then uh, we have this rate indicator on manual. And this periscope manual engaged lever is disengaged so that I can retract the periscope automatically. Cabin pressure indicator reading. It's supposed to be 15 and it is 15 PSI, so fine. Cabin air is at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Looks like 70 to me, but okay. I made a note in the live stream that it's interesting that the cabin air temperature goes all the way to 250. I object to that. <laughs> I, I think I'm pretty much cooked uh, halfway there. So yeah, probably didn't need that full range. Could have used more numbers on the altimeter and fewer numbers here. But all right, relative humidity is supposed to be at 62%, it says, and that's pretty close. 99% uh, coolant quantity, and this is the suit environment, which says my suit should be at 78 degrees, and my pressure inside the suit should be 6 psi, I assume. Okay. As in, uh, cabin temperature is way above that. Um, sea level pressure is like 14 psi. Okay, um, oxygen, uh, primary and secondary oxygens. I don't know why the primary oxygen is at 70. Uh, well, I guess that's just the uh, atmospheric mixture. No, I, yeah, well, well, it says it's supposed to be 77, and it is. Okay. So, secondary oil quantity, it's checked some of them for me. I didn't check the secondary oil quantity. Okay, suit fan switch. Uh, normal. DC volts knob to M. Okay. Uh, ammeter to normal. ASCS AC bus normal. It always goes to standby first, even if I click on that side. This on ISO battery switch uh, standby inlet valve norm. So if you like flicking switches, this is probably your thing. Now that's supposed to go to normal, but yeah, uh, it goes through off. <laughs> So that's interesting. That's fans AC bus, and when it switches off, it really switches off. Okay, Vox power switch off. I wonder if that really happened to them, or if they flicked the switch to norm without going through off, and then it wouldn't uh, turn off everything. Okay, high power on the UHF, transmit switch off, uh, beacon continuous. And everything else gets auto-checked, including the map case being secure. So, we are ready. We don't have to click the little launch switch. This alarm thing, by the way, just makes that tone, so I'll just leave it off. Oh, and the outside view it looks like this. Again, uh, no tower nearby. It's sort of freestanding right at the edge of the platform, too. I'm not going to go through all of John Glenn's flight because that's three hours. 
We'll just get through the launch, which should be pretty quick since Atlas takes five minutes to get to orbit. Got a knife there. It's interesting that Periscope stays on or up until like the very end before launch. Guess that sort of makes it less claustrophobic for the pilot. We do have a window. The window is different on this than on the suborbital Mercury capsule. Okay, when will the music cue? Come on. Okay, and off we go. That yaw indicator is going all over the place. Now here the pitch says 90 though, so maybe I was wrong. Let's see this from the outside. Interesting, it's sort of going vertical, I mean, with them in this way instead of flat like that. Okay, 40 seconds, 15 thousand feet. I was about to say 15 kilometers, but it's only 15,000 feet. And 40,000 feet after one minute. G meter is working. This is our atlas. Oh, that's a nice view of the Cape, actually. They wouldn't have... I don't know... The, I don't know how far along they built the pads. Oop, wait, it went to a different level of detail. Let's ignore that. No sound outside except for the radio communications. More sound in here. I wonder if that's a realistic amount of sound for this. It might be. Especially with a helmet on. Okay, we've lost the boosters. Sorry for not catching booster set there. I saw it during the live stream. It, it is obvious. It, I think he said the tower went in the audio. It hasn't gone so far. Oh, there it goes. Oh, okay. On on the initial time, he was incorrect about the tower going. Okay. So that's all timed properly. I think the boosters went a little bit earlier than I expected based on this clock, though. I wish I had to push buttons during this, but it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't have anything more on the checklist, either. It's just a pre-flight checklist. I could probably flick stuff now and it won't cause any problems. I don't know what that does. I wonder what if I turned off the power right now.
Well, we could have sort of a fake SCE to Ox moment, if you'd like. We got hit by lightning! Hey, anyway, we're at 6 G's right now. This is no joke. We still got a minute left. Hey, it's 7 G's. He was under-reporting it. Wait, it hasn't shut off yet. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, there goes our booster. Well, our Atlas. Got the periscope view. And we can see from out here as well. I wonder if... Uh, it's possible to program the little specs that he saw, that he reported on, John Glenn did. Reported seeing some stuff flying by the spacecraft window that later turned out to be like ice breaking off. So I don't know if we're supposed to right now, but I think I can take manual control right now by clicking fly by wire here. And... Um, I forget. I think I have to push it. Uh, pushing it in is for manual. We'll check. Uh, let's see. I just clicked fly by wire, and can I control it manually? Let's see. Yes, I can. And yep. And in fact, it doesn't have the SAS thing right now. I guess I have to turn that on some other way. But so I am in full control right now. And could conceivably run out of fuel, I guess. Emergency landing bags next. Uh, Roger, landing bag was already off. I got it first and reported it. Retro manual is off. And uh, we're all set. This is very comfortable at zero G. I have uh, very comfortable at zero G. Well, anyway, where is the retro manual being off? It's got a minute, second off, second minute thing here, but don't dial. Let me go to a suit fan too. Anyway, you get the idea. This is basically where it's at. It looks, it looks good. It has plenty of promise, but obviously, as the developer himself says, there's a lot of work to be done, which is fine. But uh, this is Go for Launch Mercury, and I hope to see what else there is to offer. And I think it'll be good uh, during live streams to use this to commemorate the various Mercury flights. Uh, maybe even in live, uh, you know, the full three hours or the full whatever amount of time while doing other things. I'll figure out something. Anyway. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.